just a little extra thing I wanted to include with our recording session tonight, uh, where you ha said you hadn't seen uh, The Life's and Times of Ernest Miller Hemingway in exactly three minutes and 30 seconds by Randy Feltface. So, uh, yeah, Ernest Hemingway is one of the most interesting, like, writers ever of all time. The dude is, the dude's, the dude was crazy, like, legitimate. He was very crazy, but he led a very interesting life, and also a very controversial life. You'll see, you'll see, but anywho, uh, the life and times of Ernest Miller Hemingway in exactly three minutes and 30 seconds, Go! First time I would wager in all of your living memories, I now am proud to present to you the life and times of Ernest Miller Hemingway in approximately three and a half minutes. Go! Born in Chicago in 1899, son of a physician and a musician, reasonably uneventful childhood, decided to study journalism. Enlisted with the Red Cross during World War I, got blown up in Milan and spent six months in hospital with severe shrapnel wounds in both legs. Fell in love with a the nurse, they decided to get married. He came home to prepare, she stayed there and ditched him for an Italian soldier, which initiated a lifelong pattern of him rejecting women before they had a chance to reject him. Damn. Take note, Maddie. Got a job as a foreign correspondent, fell in love with his roommate's sister, married her and moved to Paris. They hung out with Gertrude Stein, they kicked it with Pablo Picasso. He started writing in earnest, no pun intended, moved to Toronto, had a kid, moved back to Paris, published a couple of books, cheated on his wife, got divorced, married the other woman, converted to Catholicism, <laughs> Cut his head open after pulling on a cord thinking he was flushing a toilet and instead ripped a skylight from the roof and smashed it onto his face. Jesus. Moved to Kansas City, had another kid, his dad committed suicide, he shot a lot of bears for some reason. Had a car accident, had another kid, went to Africa to kill some wild animals and got dysentery. Karma. Published another book, moved to Cuba, shot himself in the leg whilst aiming at a shark <laughs> yes yes this sounds like some bullshit that would happen to me if I was trying to get my shark revenge or whatever yeah just like like I see you Jaws <laughs> whilst aiming at a shark <laughs> cheated on his wife got divorced married the other woman Published For Whom the Bell Tolls, sold half a million copies in a couple of months and got nominated for a Pulitzer Prize, cheated on his wife, got divorced, married the other woman, became the self-appointed leader of a band of village militia outside of Paris and was subsequently brought up on charges for contravening the Geneva Convention and got away with it like a fucking champion, <laughs> got pneumonia, moved back to Cuba and spent most of his spare time on his boat. Tracking Nazi U-boats with a machine gun and a pile of hand grenades. I am not making this shit up! <laughs> Had a few more car accidents, three more concussions. Got clawed while playing with a lion. <laughs> Depressed, drank, got fat, published a couple more books, went back to Africa to shoot some more wild animals, and barely survived two separate plane crashes in the space of 24 hours, winding up with a fractured skull, yeah. internal bleeding, cracked spine, ruptured liver, first degree burns, and a paralyzed sphincter muscle. Come on! Oh, damn. Won a Nobel Prize, had a file opened on him by J. Edgar Hoover, left a bunch of shit in a safe in Cuba and moved to Idaho, paranoid that the feds were following him, which they were because he spent most of the 1940s working for the KGB. Again, not making this shit up. Suffered from <laughs> hepatitis, nephritis, hypertension, hemochromatosis, anemia and impotence. Karma. Got committed, received way too much electroconvulsive therapy and came out all fucked up, started hinting at suicide, so immediately got recommitted, received another couple of months worth of electroconvulsive therapy, got released, put both barrels of his favourite 12 gauge shotgun into his mouth and blew his fucking head off. What a guy! Jesus Christ. Yeah, what a life, huh? What a guy! Yes, Ernest Miller Hemingway is one of the most insane, <coughs> insane human beings ever to exist. I mean, you, I mean, I don't know how anybody has time and money to do all that shit. 
Like he did a lot of that stuff before he got the Pulitzer Prize. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's one of the, um, uh, I think if two planes crashed while I was trying to hunt animals in Africa, I'd probably be like, maybe this is, uh, some sort of, uh, signal from the universe or God telling me that I should probably stop hunting animals in Africa. Yeah, but he's, he, he spent a good portion of his life, you know, just searching for reasons to like like he was a he was a proponent of just like like why do, why do we exist why is like like why is it that human beings are here and eh, as you can see hell of a marriage history just just cheated on his wife got divorced married the other woman cheated on his wife got divorced married the other woman Cheated on his wife, got to yeah, and it's just it, it's unbelievable just the life that this man lived, and the fact that he uh, that he got the Nobel Prize in 1954 when he published For Whom the Bell Tolls, and he was already 55, or 54, 55, and he'd already been through a bunch of this shit, like tracking the Nazi U-boats, uh, you know, working for the KGB. Hunting sharks, hunting bears, um, wildlife in Africa twice. Jesus. It's crazy stuff, dude. It's crazy, crazy stuff. And the man's family does have a history of depression and, uh, and like, mental illness. That's the thing about it as well. And they're saying that's why his father did what he did. And, you know... Honestly, this is just... Uh, Looking back on the writers and the and the uh, people that we've had as writers and as creators and as artists in this country, and he's one of like the like one of the biggest American literature writers ever. I mean, in terms of him, I would say in terms of story, you know, short stories and novels, the guy the guy was a, like really like really big influence. <coughs> For me, I this is who I had a lot of uh, influence from. Robert Frost. Robert Frost had a lot of really great poems that was that basically it, it set up a lot of like the main like a lot of like poetry standards that we have here in the states. And I I. I love his work. The dude, the dude does the dude's work stands the test of time. But yeah, either way, <clears throat> that was the life and times of Ernest Miller Hemingway. So yeah, I got nothing else to say except for damn. Yeah, <laughs> he took the words right out of my mouth. So till next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care. <laughs>